Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of uh, live hosting video chat with Igor and Danny. Uh, we will be recapping this very show, game number two, round one, between uh, number two seed Eastern Conference Boston Celtics and number seven seed Eastern Conference Milwaukee Bucks. Last night in DT Garden, the Celtics defeated the uh, Milwaukee Bucks 120, uh, 106. Uh, and uh, the Celtics are leading 2 0 after two games in uh, Boston. Uh, the team leaders 120 106 last night. The team leaders from uh, Bucks um, 30 points, uh, Ante Tukompo, and the other side, Brown 30 points. Uh, also, uh, Rebounds, Yanis, Ante Tukompo 9, Jason Tatum 7, assists um, 8, assists Yanis, and Terry Rozier also. Um, eight uh, assists. The Celtics uh, won the first quarter, 33-22. Um, the second quarter uh, was won by Bucks, 29-27. Uh, so the Celtics had uh, a nine points lead at the half time. Um, the Celtics won uh, the third quarter, 30-24. So they had 15 points lead, um, thanks by Shane, Shane Larkin, Basel Dieter, after three. Quarters and finally the last quarter practically uh, was won by Bucks 31 and 30. It was great win, blowout win by the Celtics. Um, in in this very particular show, before we skip to Daniel and his first impressions of uh, the game, I want to tell you if you don't follow, uh, follow the show at the blogtalkradio.com, then find. The Celtics Talk Radio page. Um, then follow us, you will get notifications about every show. For example, 198 show with three excellent guests, Warren Show, um, Sam Packard and Kayla Burton, you can find it and you can listen to the game one recap. We gave you some keys um, after the game number one. Uh, for the game two, and now we will discuss about those keys. Again, uh, we are Igor and Danny. Um, uh, his Twitter account at Mitskamato6, um, uh, and my Twitter account, Il Numero Uno. You can also, uh, search for the Celtics Talk Radio Twitter account, uh, at Celtics Talk Radio SDR Capital Letters. Um, also follow, um, uh, uh, follow, uh, uh, Celtics Talk Radio Facebook page and uh, we believe Green Celtics Talk uh, Celtics Fans Forum uh, another Facebook page. If you follow official Celtics Talk Radio Facebook page, you will get all single information uh, about our radio shows, guests, and video chats. Links. Also, subscribe for this video chat and the others to our YouTube channel. If you're looking this show, you probably are. A subscriber. Um, so subscribe to our YouTube channel for the 29 uh, video chats. Um, and also, like I said, we have 198 regular show episodes at blogtalkradio.com on demand and 67 special episodes. Uh, we have Instagram account. You can listen us on iTunes. You can find us on Apple. Uh, practically wherever you are searching for your podcast, you can find us. And Celtics Talk Radio page, Celtics Talk Radio Twitter, the safest way how, how you can find all our uh, video chats and radio shows. And of course, subscribe to the show on blogtalkradio.com. Now, we have Gordon Taylor and uh, Marco Plant, uh, 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 I mean injury update, but before I, before I go to that, uh, Daniel, tell me for intro, how did you see the last uh, game? Well, it was a statement game for the Boston Celtics. Uh, the fact that the Celtics in the first game ended up going into overtime to win that game by just six points, a game that the Milwaukee Bucks felt that they should have won, and they pretty much said that after the game in the post-game press conferences. They felt that they basically didn't play their best game and that, you know, that they would need to make some adjustments and that they would be better in game two. And then in game two, instead of them being better, they ended up even playing worse than what they did in game one. And you ended up blowing them out. 
you know, the game pretty much, the final margin of victory was uh, not even as close as what the game really was, if you really think about it. You know, Jalen Brown was the best player on the court, despite, you know, the performance everybody got to see from Giannis Antetokounmpo in this game. You know, even though many, some people out here in the Boston area, like Felger and Mass, for example, seem to be trying to downplay the Celtics' victory and making it making it more about the Milwaukee Bucks, saying they just stink in this case. Um, but it's a major situation here for the Boston Celtics. The fact that you blew out that Milwaukee Bucks team now has this Milwaukee Bucks team kind of in a position where they're wondering, what is it going to take pretty much in order for you to actually beat this Boston Celtics team? And if you can end up uh, winning game three down in Milwaukee, you end up basically putting that team in a position where, you know, they just might start to back themselves and you can end up sweeping this series. Me, technically, I said it last night, I'm kind of hoping you win game three, not only to basically make that team doubt themselves if they aren't already, but that you can also put some of these doubters that have done nothing but talk crap about this team, like Charles Barkley, for example, on notice, because, again, they didn't think we had what it took to have a good offensive game, and yesterday you put up 120 on this team. So it's a big statement win by the Celtics team, and hopefully going to Milwaukee, they can still at least one of these games and come back to close it out in game five. Um, okay, let us go to, before we uh, jump to the game uh, recap, uh, let us go to um, to the injury report. Uh, what, uh, uh, want to know why Gordon Hayward wasn't on the bench with Kyrie Irving and Marcus Mark for game one, Daniel Ainge gave you an update. Um, Ainge said Hayward to work with running specialist in Indianapolis. Gordon Hayward will not be with the Celtics in early playoff stage. Um, Danny Ainge said Tuesday morning with uh, Hayward uh, recently beginning jogging. Ainge said the team is sending him to Indianapolis for the next phase of rehabbing process to work with leading specialist in running mechanics. Both Celtics and Hayward have worked with the specialist before. Ainge added that uh, he thinks um, Hayward is progressing nicely, and uh, in the video posted at the Players' Tribune, Hayward is jogging with uh, the trainer Jason uh, Snippers. Um, although the team doesn't expect Hayward to return this year from the ankle injury, the Celtics' priority is to Hayward to be uh, to continue his rehab rather to be with the team. So, as the Boston Celtics defeated the Bucks in the game one and two. Uh, the question uh, without uh, Kyrie Irving, Mark, Mark Daniel Price, and Gordon Hayward, the, pre- pre- the question was where is Gordon Hayward, the star? Danny Ainge told NBC Sport Boston KB team that Hayward is won't be with the team early in the playoff because he's recapping in, in, in the arm. Third team Hayward will train with a leading specialist with uh, whom the Celtics are familiar as he works in, in Indiana on his running mechanics. Ainge also told Chin that Hayward is progressing nicely when he starts running for the first time. Hayward still no timetable for return, but the subjects repeatedly say, says, said that uh, Hayward will miss the rest of the season and will be focusing on um, healthy uh, return to the training camp despite uh, Hayward's refusal to admit the same. With uh, Irving out the rest of the year, uh, Hayward continue, continued absence seems like a uh, foregone conclusion. Bringing back Irving and Hayward, healthy for the training camp, would turn the Celtics into juggernaut, juggernaut the next year. Stevens told reporter uh, via conference call uh, Tuesday that Irving's uh, profession has been encouraging as well. Um, again, he is going to make full recovery, so now that's, that the screws are out and now that we see the early progress, uh, this is good. Daniel, um, some idiots on the uh, Twitter uh, are suggesting that uh, the subject talk out on Caber, this is worrisome because he's not on the games, 
And it is good that we hear that he's recapping his boy in good, that he is actually uh, training well, and it is better that he train with the uh, physicist uh, in Indianapolis than uh, to be on the bench and uh, cheering like a chill leader, right? Yeah, again, you know, just look at what we're seeing right now with this team. If you're a Boston Celtics fan and you look at it with, uh, you know, a decent, you know, mind, I guess you can say, you know, an open mind, you're seeing a Boston Celtics team that right now is being led with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, really. Those are your two best players in this series. You know, you could make an argument maybe for Al Horford, but those are the two most, you know, talented players on your team right now. And Jalen Brown is a second-year player, and he just put 30 up on the Milwaukee Bucks yesterday, outdueling Giannis Antetokounmpo, who everybody looks at as one of the top players in this league. You know, when have you ever heard, Igor, any of these NBA analysts mention yeah. Jalen Brown as a top 10 player in this league? But you hear it all the time when it comes to Ante De Coupo in this case, and yet he got he got beat in a head to head battle by Jalen Brown when it came to basically who was the best player on the court last night. You know, if you're thinking about this, imagine what these t- this team can be capable of next year if Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are playing like this, and you add Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving to that mix alongside Al Horford as the fifth starter. You know, I'm sorry for anybody out there that basically is just thinking about this season is the only season that matters. You know, again, you got to yeah. think about the long run like Danny Ames yeah. is thinking. The moment you lost Gordon Hayward, your chances of winning an NBA championship nearly went to zero unless everything yeah. went the right way. You were not going to beat the Golden State Warriors best four out of seven with the roster we had with Marcus Smart and Kyrie Irving, unless there was a drastic injury to somebody out of that big four, meaning they had to lose Curry, Durant, Thompson, or Green in order for you to have a chance. Houston may be a chance that you could knock them off without Gordon Hayward, but that was really it. You had a chance to get out of the East, but not really win the championship unless Houston somehow knocks out Golden State. Of course, now Stephen Curry's from what is being reported, he may not even be able to play in round two, so he probably won't even be able to return until the Western Conference Finals. But still, look at what we're seeing. This is like a coming out party, Igor, for J- for Jalen Brown right now in the in this in these playoffs alongside Jason Tatum. You blew out the Milwaukee Bucks, and Tatum didn't even have a good game yesterday. Some can argue. Imagine if Jason Tatum would have had a game similar to what he had in Game One, on top of what the Celtics did last night. You know. That would have been a 30-point victory for you, you know, you can kind of say. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know, get over the fact that we basically have shut down Gordon Hayward, or, or should I say Kyrie Irving, and Gordon Hayward is recovering right now. You know, both those guys, Danny Ainge and the Celtics, have made sure that next season they are going to be healthy. Because remember, next season is the last season of our contract with Kyrie Irving, the last season of our contract with Al Horford, and several other players as well in this case. So Danny Ainge is making sure at the at the minimum you're going to have one year, hopefully, of all these guys together being healthy. And if it's obvious that Danny Ainge, that to Danny Ainge and to the rest of us, that this team basically just can't get it done together, then he can go about his business and make some moves to get some other stars to try and come back this way and try to compete at that point. But for now... Focus on enjoying yourself, seeing what Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown can get you, you know, because right now you've had the rumors of us trying to go after Kawhi Leonard, but with what Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are doing through two games, some might argue you may not want to go and do Kawhi Leonard if it's going to cost and, you these and guys. And Terry, Terry Rozier. And indeed, yeah, why would you do it? Because those guys, all three have all-star potential, and we already have uh, the three all star at uh, the team. So I don't, I don't know wh- where is the rush. Of course, I want as as the best possible roster that we can put together. And I mean, Kawhi is the star in this league, but there is plenty of question of uh, uh, his health, and there is a question um, about um, uh, his willingness to resign here if 
he would be playing with the uh, boss. So uh, again, uh, in this particular situation, I would maybe I said I would not trade Rozier, and I said I would not trade um, uh, Jason Tatum, and I certainly would not trade both Jalen Brown and uh, Jason Tatum for. Uh, 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 Leonard, you know, and I think that uh, the playoff performances are giving me a right. Uh, anyway, Tammy, uh, I mean, uh, we have good information about uh, about the um, Kyrie Irving uh, too. Also, Daniel Tice is progressing, and both guys should be ready for the training camp opening. And I must say that. Uh, uh, you know, um, Marcus Mark's mother uh, discovered cancer, and all the best to uh, her, and uh, all the best uh, to Marcus Mark. Marcus Mark repeated, he is um, leaning towards April 27 as the date of return. So, again, the prayers to Marcus Mark's mother, and all the best. Uh, do you want to say something about that? So condolences go out to him. I know what it's like having a parent who has cancer, as my father does have it himself, you know. So it is a you know, disruptive type situation for you. You know, have difficulties focusing on, you know, what it is you have to do for yourself, wondering if, you know, this could be the last day. You're, you got how many days you have left with your parent in this situation. I give his mother credit for, you know, coming out and telling him, yeah. you know, go go be with your team. I want you to focus on getting yourself back to being healthy and getting yourself back on that court for your for your team, for yourself and for your fans. You know, yeah. there's many many you know fans out there that would basically be saying I want you to be here with me during my time and she took it the yeah, opposite exactly. direction, you know. So that that she got she's on my respect in that that sense in this situation, you know, and uh, of course, if any if anything was to come where you know things were to get really serious, you know I I would have no problem with Marcus leaving the team to go and attend to, her, to his mother in a situation like that because we know cancer is a serious you know serious matter. Um, but that was a really a decent, really decent and respectful thing she did, and hopefully he does you know manage to return because again everybody looks at this Celtics team as the current roster they have right now. When it comes to thinking, oh, Milwaukee can beat them like Charles Barkley thinks, or oh, the 76ers can knock them out in the next round if the Celtics get by Milwaukee. But none of them seem to remember that there's a chance that, you know, Marcus Smart will be back on the court in this case, and that he can be a very disruptive player regardless of who he's defending. Excellent stuff. Now uh, we can jump to the uh, game recap. Uh, uh, and again, after Kevin. The blow uh, after defeating the Milwaukee Bucks in the first game, 113, 107 in overtime, 99-99 after uh, 48 minutes. Uh, the Celtics uh, had blowout win in against Milwaukee in game two, 120 at uh, 104, and uh, that game uh, the Celtics uh, I think had uh, 20 points advantage. I will check right now. Um, the biggest lead um, of uh, the Celtics 20 and the biggest lead of the Bucks uh, 4. Uh, so, uh, Danny, it was not expected. Uh, we expected uh, uh, the Milwaukee Bucks uh, uh, big response, like you said, and I was listening to a lot of Bucks, and they were pretty confident about the game too, you know. They said, well, the Boston Celtics escaped, we should have won that game, and, uh, uh, you know, we had we a better team, uh, we had, uh, uh, you know, the most talented team, so uh, they cannot guard Giannis, and the Celtics cannot score. And guess what? The Celtics depleted roster um, scored 120, and the Bucks uh, lost after uh, having uh, like um, 59.7% uh, field goal. And we will talk about that right now, and we'll talk about that, uh, why this is the case, uh, you know, and uh, uh, we will skip to the statistics right now. Uh, so, um, in TD Garden, uh, uh, 
uh, I mean, uh, attendance was uh, 18,624 uh, sellout. Uh, Mark Davis, the official, our well-known official, and one of the favorites, uh, you know, so so-called favorites in TV Garden. Mark uh, Ayoet, Ayoet and Sean Wright. Um, the Celtics started the same group. Uh, Jason Tatum, uh, 20, 30, 30 minutes, um, four points, uh, two of nine shooting, really struggling, and seven uh, rebounds, three assists, uh, four steals, plus 11, however. Uh, solid defense and good influence on the game, but uh, he struggled to score two of nine, and his absence of scoring was uh, the Celtics make, uh, you know, uh, his portion of scoring uh, actually was took over by Jalen Brown. Al Horford had shy night to say after 24 and 12, uh, the game one. Now he had 16 points, 7 of 11 shooting, excellent percent. Uh, he had uh, five rebounds, uh, four assists. Uh, two fouls on him and two steals plus 14. This is, uh, uh, again, great game from uh, Al, who played 35, point, 35 minutes 30 seconds. Um, Aaron Baines, a uh, little better game than game one, uh, 24 minutes, uh, six points, uh, six rebounds, uh, two fouls on him uh, plus four. However, he was missing. Uh, Shoots, he shot it three of six. The game one, he shot it all of four. So combined, he shot it um, uh, three of ten in the two games, which is 30%, which is bad. So I want him not to miss bunnies and not to miss those, uh, those, uh, you know, um, uncontested uh, mid range jumpers. Uh, so, pain six and six plus four plus minus factor. And uh, 50% shooting. Uh, Jalen Brown, 33 minutes and 15 seconds, 30 points, 12, 12 uh, 22 shooting, uh, which is excellent and over 50%. Uh, 5 of uh, 12 uh, shooting threes, which is under 50%, but really good. He had some plus threes. Uh, he had uh, five rebounds, uh, one foul, one assist, two fouls on him, plus 17 which is uh, the third best plus minus in the team. Most of the performance from Jalen Brown, we will talk more later about him. Terry Rozier dominating the series absolutely. He destroyed the Bucks and the Blacks so again in this game. Uh, he played 37 minutes, 50 seconds, uh, almost 38 minutes. Um, 23 points, uh, 8 of 14, shooting 3 of 5 for 3, which is 60%. Excellent. Free throws, 100%. Four of four. Uh, he had plus minus plus 19, the team highest, and eight uh, assists. I was criticizing him. I want four assists in the first game. He had three assists in the game two. He had eight assists. So bravo, Terry Rossi. The great overall game. He's controlling the pace. He's controlling the tempo. And guess what, Danny? In two games, he played 70 minutes and he didn't have zero turnovers. Zero turnovers. And what is more important is controlling the pace of the game as only Paul Handler uh, capable to be starter at the Celtics. He's controlling the game totally and not very flexible so like uh, experts, uh, uh, you know, had prognosis. Gershon Yabuselli made first appearance in the playoffs with 11 minutes and he appeared in the first quarter. He was decent, you know. He was not uh, special. He had two steals, three rebounds. Uh, no points, and uh, he missed two shots, two threes, and minus three, but uh, he's just like, uh, you know, temper bomb uh, from the bench. Now, play that power forward. We'll discuss about the uh, lineups a uh, little more uh, later. Uh, Marcus Morris had uh, 18 points, uh, uh, again, most of the performance, 6 of 11, should be 3 of 6 for 3, which is... Uh, 50% only criticism, 3 of 7 free throws. You can do it better, Marcus. Free throws. Uh, 5 rebounds, 1 uh, 
uh, since uh, one turnover, one steal, plus 19, keep setting the team uh, highest plus minus in Terry Rogier. And uh, Morris is the second best, the second most important uh, player in the team and the most important from the bench, obviously. And Moose Morris, we talk about that in the game one, that we expect uh, better production from the Moose. And Moose responded because he was playing in the big Monroe lineup, so um, Stevens made adjustment from uh, the uh, hockey box um, small ball lineups. Moose responded punishing the uh, um, you know, the guards like uh, Jabari Parker, Malcolm Brogdon that were uh, guarding him in the switches. Uh, he had easy layups, 12 points, 5 of 7 shooting, uh, 2 of 3 uh, free throws, uh, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, uh, great game, good game from the bench, from the moose, uh, just like we expect, uh, plus 1. Uh, Shane Larkin, after he had um, arguably bad game, uh, number 1, and 4 turnovers in the first, uh, in the second quarter. Everybody was bashing Shane Larkin, but Sugar Sh Shane responded in a good manner. He had 11 points, 5 of 8 shooting, including, including buzzer beater 3 uh, at the end of the third quarter. Uh, he had uh, at least 3 uh, dribble drives and finishing uh, over uh, terrible uh, box uh, defense. He also had uh, 3 assists uh, to uh, fall from him and minus 8. Uh, after Nader, Shane Ojale played uh, garbage time, so practically played uh, Yabuseli, Morris, Omro, Larkin, four, four, uh, four men bench and uh, nine main men's rotations. Uh, now, uh, when we compare uh, field goal percent, uh, Bucks were better, 59.7% field goal, and Celtics 53.3%. Uh, but what, what is the difference? The difference is the pace. Uh, Bucks played terrible, terrible pace. Um, slow pace had only 70 shots, and uh, the Bucks attempted like 17 threes, which is uh, laughable, being 41% uh, of threes, 7 of 17. Uh, Celtics, on the other hand, had uh, 99 shots, played higher tempo, high pace game, and uh, you know, the, the, the Bucks uh, shooting selection and the strategy is really dumb. And this way, they cannot defeat us, but that's their problem. Uh, Celtics shot it 13 of 31, um, you know, for three, which is 42%. Uh, and the free throws, uh, seven uh, from 17. Uh, Danny, this is, there is the nice symmetry between the box uh, free throws and the three pointers. Seven of 17, 41%. This is the good percent for the, uh, from the free throws. And I wish the Bucks can this kind of symmetry till the end of the series, you know? Something should be, the, like I said, 30 Ps. So we were like uh, plus 18 from the three points line. That was a huge, deficit, uh, huge advantage for us. Uh, from the three lines, plus four from the Celtics. Celtics should be bad, but still more better than uh, Bucks, 61% and the Bucks, 41%. From the line, uh, uh, rebounds were tied uh, 38 38, and uh, nothing to tell there. And uh, I just want to analyze uh, points in the paint. In the first game, it was plus 14 bucks, in the second game, it was plus two bucks, so uh, 60 and uh, 58 bucks. So that means that uh, the subjects made adjustments. And you know, uh, crowding back in the paint, and then he, the Celtics defended box better. The box, uh, yet score, scored, uh, 60 points from, from the, uh, 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 from the paint, but the Celtics also scored 58 points from the paint. So, uh, points in the paint plus two bucks, and it was plus 14 the last game. Uh, the second chance points, uh, uh the Celtics, um, had more in the first game, also had more in the, Last game, the Celtics had like um, uh, 20, game, 20 second chance points and the Bucks 9, so plus 11. That is the second most important key uh, in the game. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the Celtics had 9 offensive rebounds and they scored 20 second chance points. Bucks had uh, 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 7 uh, offensive rebounds and they scored 9 uh, second chance points, uh, 4 of 6 shooting, which is not uh, bad. Uh, you know, uh, 
percent, but uh, second chance points plus eleven uh, Celtics. Fast break points, uh, fifteen, fifteen. Uh, the last game, Danny Fox had like plus eleven, plus fourteen uh, second uh, fast break points. And the reason for this is that uh, Danny in this very game, the Celtics had five turnovers as a team. Five turnovers as a team. So the box uh, will be will have the hard time to score if the Celtics don't lose the ball. Okay, the box don't shoot threes, are not efficient, low pace. They scored fast break points. They scored from the paint, sixty points as we saw, and uh, they love to have uh, the second chance points maybe, and more they love to have points. Uh, 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 points out of turnovers and they didn't have the points out of turnovers and that was the huge difference. The highest lead, suffix twenty, the box four, and that's that's it four time four tie ties in the game. Uh, before I analyze the box, uh, what do you say about the statistics and we will enter more into these statistics uh, after analyzing box. What do you say? Well, I don't think the points in the paint was really much of an adjustment more than the fact that the Celtics just had a better, you know, scoring output when it came to that uh, uh-huh. department. Uh, okay. You know, that uh, the fact that in game one you had Baines who didn't score a single thing, you know, he laid an egg in that department when it came to yeah. points scored. Monroe, if I'm correct, didn't, uh, he only scored, I think, like... Uh, one point. Yeah, one point, something like that. So... It was not really them, you know, it was basically like we didn't get many points from a bunch of those guys who basically do the job of scoring in the paint. Uh, While this game, they all kind of gave you something. So, you know, you look at the the bench pretty much, the battle of the benches is what determined the outcome in this matchup. As you had Monroe, Larkin, and and, uh, Morris, that the three of them basically combined to outscore everybody on the Milwaukee bench that played. I think it was, uh, out, they outscored them by 16 or 18, something like that. So I'm ca- calculating right now the benches. Uh, the Bucks had like uh, uh, 25 points from the bench, and the Celtics had uh, 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 40, 41. So, 41, 25, plus 16, something like that. Yeah, so 16. So, like I said, you know, it was, you know, the battle of the benches that really determined the outcome of this game, you know, yeah. that uh, gave you that victory. So, it's, yeah. you know, again, one of the reasons, as you said, that uh, you ended up getting that was because Monroe had, you know, his best, you know, um, output so far in this series. You know, he was... uh one of the focal points in that game yesterday yesterday as we just kept feeding him the ball and he kept just abusing the other guys that were defending him from the Milwaukee team, you know, as literally guys like Middleton, Muhammad, none of them could basically stop him while he was on the floor, you know, so he just kept force feeding it to him and he just kept literally dunking and layup, you know, layups or floaters, whatever he wanted, he was basically getting, you know, so Brad Stevens went with the bigger lineup of, you know, Horford, Morris, and Monroe, so that Monroe get, basically could get the job down low, while Morris and Horford went outside to try and make it where guys like Ante DeCompo, Middleton, and all those other guys would have no choice but yeah. to leave the paint to allow Monroe to go one-on-one with whoever was defending him. I, you know, I, want, I want to talk more about the lineups later. And adjustments, uh, you are on the good track. You know, you, you know, but yeah. that was literally it. But, you know, you got to give credit to you know the guys in the starting lineup, specifically the ones that led the lineup. You know, led the scoring in Brown and Rozier, because when you look at the scoring output they gave you, they literally matched up Middleton and Ante DeCumpo, which technically, yeah. in my my opinion, when you look at these two these two teams and what we've seen in games one and two, it's Come down to little, come down to literally that somebody has had to basically go the route of matching up those guys in some sort of way that it leads to the rest of the group from the from the bench having to just do enough to outscore their counterparts. When you look at it, Antetokounmpo and Middleton 
were so good in game one that the entire starting lineup basically worked together with such a good scoring output that it matched up the entire Milwaukee team, which allowed Larkin and, you know, and Monroe to be the difference in the game because they scored the last few points needed to basically win you by six. And in this game, Brown and Rozier matched up Ante DeCoupo and Middleton virtually, yeah. you know, nearly point for point, which allowed everybody else to basically go the route of outscoring the rest of the Milwaukee team. So if you're able to do that, where you got somebody putting up a, a scoring, you know, output, where Ante DeCoupo and Middleton are not really that much of a, you know, a factor, you're going to be in a great position to win every one of these games because the rest of these guys are not really that dependable. You have the better team when it comes to players in being more reliable after Ante DeCoupo and Middleton when you think about it. Despite the fact that they're young and many might say inexperienced, your guys this season have proven they are more reliable than most of the players on that Milwaukee team. And it's so thus far, it's being proven in the first two games. Uh, yeah, let's analyze Milwaukee. Uh, you had uh, some great points, Danny. Uh, I mean, uh, Chris Middleton played uh, uh, 37 minutes. He had uh, 35 uh, points, uh, 10 of 14 shooting, and Corey Bones, uh, one assist plus, but he was minus 18 for the reason. Uh, he was well guarded. He didn't attempt a single uh, field goal. He had, he had no field goals attempts in the first quarter because he was guarded by, uh, 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 you know, uh, Brown. So, uh, besides putting uh, 30 points in the offense, Brown played a great defense. You know? And Middleton scored, uh, how much it was? 31 points in the previous game. He found uh, his shoot in the third and fourth quarter, but he was not that efficient uh, like the last time. And Yanis, like you said, 30 points, uh, 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 9 rebounds, uh, 8 assists, but he was minus 13. Uh, he played 43 minutes. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Steven said that he's practically unguardable. Uh, and Steve, I mean, uh, those points, 30 points, um, he scored, I think, in the first a little, and then uh, Joe Brinke get him uh, back on the court against the Boston Celtics second lineup that was at the time uh, Shane Larkin, uh, uh, Shane Larkin, Jason Tatum, uh, Mook, Mook Morris, uh, uh, Monroe, and uh, I, 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 I think uh, uh, Brown, or, uh, no, uh, Brown or Yabusele, yeah. So against that group, uh, uh, the Bucks in the second quarter had uh, the huge run, you know, and Giannis was leading uh, that unit, but uh, the Celtics responded with the run by themselves and finished the, uh, you know, second, uh, finish at the halftime, uh, finish, finish at the halftime uh, on, uh, you know, uh, uh, with the lead. And, uh, the other starters, Eric Bledsoe, uh, 12 points, 5 of 13 shooting really bad game again. Uh, you know, uh, assist, four, 4 assists and minus 3, and he was totally dominated by, uh, Eric Terry Rozier. Tony Snell, 2 points. Is this, is this man on the series? Is this man existing on the series then? Because I really didn't know about him uh, um, in those two games. Now, uh, Rob Printy uh, tried to play like uh, 12, ga 12 men. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Actually, 13 men. So, um, that is showing you Danny Cornmaker played uh, garbage time one minute. Uh, but uh, practically, he, he rotated 12 men, which is not normal for, for the players. And I don't, I don't know why he did it, because, you know, uh, the guys from the box were talking. If, if they lose 3-0 and nothing is working, 
can, can say, you know, uh, well, uh, no, nothing, nothing is working right now, and let's let's do and try sometimes. But uh, this 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 way, in the game two to rotate thirteen men, this is something I haven't seen in a long time in the playoffs. Uh, six minutes, Tyler Zeller, uh, zero, my, zero points minus ten. Uh, the Zabari Parker, ten uh, minutes, uh, zero points minus fifteen. Valkos dropped on uh, uh, eighteen uh, minutes, twenty-five seconds, uh, ten points minus seventeen. Jason Terry, five minutes, zero points minus three. Uh, uh, besides from dropped on. Those uh, three guys, Zeller, Parker, Terry, no influence. Now, positive influence is Shabbat, Mohammed, 12, min 12 minutes and 11 points uh, plus 6. Uh, he had influence, 4 of 8 shooting, you know, a little spark of the bench. But Denny, they were playing, they were playing, I think, in the second uh, quarter and the third, uh, a small, small ball lineup. It's uh, Ante to Compo at 5. And uh, Shabazz Mohammed at uh, four. Uh, you had Broughton and you had uh, De, De, De La Vedora and Bledsoe or Middleton. So, with that kind of lineup, you, you are not playing Shabazz Mohammed, you know, because he gave you the spark plug, but uh, that, uh, that lineup with uh, Ante Tukompo at five didn't work. Why? Uh, and there is a reason why this lineup was not successful during the season uh, for the box, which is well documented at NBA.com. It has negative net rating. Okay. Um, the reason is because uh, neither Shabazz Mohammed and Antetokounmpo are the true ring protectors, you know, and uh, uh, Stevens responded adjustments. Uh, on that kind of lineup, small ball, Shabazz Mohammed at four and Antetokounmpo at five. Uh, Stevens responded, uh, and, and plus Brogdon, Stevens responded with a big lineup, you know, uh, with Moose, with uh, Baines, with uh, Hotford, or Tatum, or Morris. And Moose was, uh, had easy layups over Jabari Parker and uh, Malcolm Brogdon and the switches. And also, Crawford was posting uh, Brogdon a couple of uh, possessions. So, uh, the only way how that lineup, uh, small ball lineup, uh, can work for the Bucks is that you can shoot the threes very efficient. But Bucks are not doing that. And Stevens uh, readjusting with uh, the, the big model lineup. And posted up everything, and totally destroyed that that concept. And uh, later, uh, Job Twenty uh, abandoned that lineup. Uh, five minutes, uh, zero points uh, minus one. Sterling down nine minutes, four points plus four. Uh, so practically out out of uh, let's say eight uh, guys. Danny, uh, you have uh, five guys scoring zero. The whole bench uh, scoring uh, 20, uh, 21 points. And, uh, uh, you know, actually, I, the whole bench scoring 25 points. And uh, the other side, 41 points Celtics bench. So practically, uh, Joe Printy, uh, in my opinion, was totally lost on the court. What do you say about that uh, big uh, Antetokounmpo lineup with, uh, like I said, Shabazz, Mohamed, and Antetokounmpo? And what do you say about Steven's response? Well, like we said, you know, you just said it there. Mohamed is not really a rim protector. Antetokounmpo himself, you know, is tall enough to be one. But Antetokounmpo is not somebody you really see used to being in that paint, banging with somebody. Look at all the trouble he's had with Al Horford throughout this series. You know, yesterday, you know, Mike Gorman was saying it during the game itself. Alongside Tommy Heinsohn, you got Arthur DiCoupo and, and Horford banging with each other while, you know, Horford's got the ball. And literally, 
Auntie is doing everything he can to try to shut down Horford. And Horford just seems to rev the ball up. And it's, it's still going in. And Auntie is just shaking his head like, what the heck do I got to do to stop this guy? You know, he doesn't have the body to go banging with these guys down low inside the paint. Uh, and, you know, he, he is not a guy that's similar to, say, you know, a Dwight Howard type player, someone like that. You know, you look at someone that's maybe a little bit bigger than him. Someone like, say, Anthony Davis could be a, is, is, is a better rim protector right now than, than Ante DeCompo. You know, Anthony Davis is a, is a little bit taller, if you think about it. He's got a little bit of a bigger body. So he can yeah. bang with someone like Al Horford in this case. Ante DeCompo doesn't have it. And unfortunately for the Bucks, they really don't have anybody on that team that really can go banging down low in this situation, which is why Brad Stevens, when he went that rule and he's, you know, putting Monroe and Baines and Monroe and Morris with Al Horford on the floor, that really was him taking advantage. And like I said, it was the smartest thing he could have done in this situation because Monroe, yeah. you know, Monroe is the biggest guy we have on this team in this case. And he just started feasting. It was like, you know, a happy Thanksgiving type meal for this guy because he was just chewing them up in this situation. There was nobody on the floor that Milwaukee had that could literally stop Monroe in this case. He was just literally having like a given the ball and it was either either A, the ball was given to him and there was nobody around him. So yeah. He was getting easy yeah. walk, easy one handed dunks. Or he had somebody right behind him and all you see him do is that was literally blew out my way, Jaboni, pretty much give him a nice little behind check with his, you know, that, that big old rear end of his and lay it up in it. That's literally what we saw last night. You got to, again, it just shows also, Igor, what everybody yeah. who has said the Boston Celtics will win this series has said. The coaching yeah, uh, in this series, uh, the, the, uh, the advantage to the Celtics is just too much. The coach in Milwaukee is nowhere near Brad Stevens in this situation. And that's the biggest advantage of all that the Boston Celtics had going into this series. You know, despite the fact you don't have Kyrie Irving, you don't have Marcus Smart, you don't have Gordon Hayward, the fact that you have Brad Stevens is the one reason why you had a chance and you should have been considered to win this series. You know, you, maybe you shouldn't be considered the favorite to beat um, Philly, because they got guys like you and me and all of that. But against Milwaukee, that coach is somebody that it's obvious after yesterday. The coach, the guy does not know what the heck he is doing. You know, and I would not be surprised yeah. if he is basically looking for another job somewhere after this season. If he continues to make mistakes like that, using so many guys, and yet all the guys can't, can't seem to get a single basket to go in. Um, and uh, I, I, I want to, besides uh, going um, after some other parameters, you know, uh, that will tell us where the Boston is winning those two games, actually. Um, I want to make emphasize, and I was laughing because LeBron stated that, uh, quote, uh, the team changes, um, how, how, how he, that is, practically the new team members, uh, stop, prevent the Cleveland from uh, proper preparations for the playoffs. I mean, this is really laughable, but uh, from LeBron, you, you, you can expect everything. Um, anyway, I, I wanted to say about the walk box and the that lineup. Um, the guys, listen, the lineup, the li guys, viewers, and then the lineup that uh, made a run, the game won. Uh, the last three minutes in the uh, fourth uh, period and overtime, that eight minutes, that lineup made a run at the Celtics. Uh, that was the lineup. Uh, Antetokounmpo at five, uh, Middleton, Snell, Brogdon, Bledsoe. And they were running and they tried to run the, the same the same uh, type of offense, but really little. Uh, pra pra 
problematic if they abandon that lineup. I don't know why. Uh, so, so you get anti. Uh, can you hear me? You get anti to combo at the middle. You get from the left side Brogdon and uh, Middleton. From the right side, you have Bledsoe and Tony Snell. Okay? Now, Bledsoe is having the ball at, at, at the right side. At, at the left side, pardon. Uh, Brogdon and Middleton at the right side. Uh, Bledsoe is having the ball at the left side. If Terry Rozier in pick and roll coverages with uh, either Snell or Antetokounmpo, if uh, Terry Rozier uh, overreacts, you know, and if he comes over the screen to contest Bledsoe, uh, he can drive and he can kick in the corner. And you have Tommy Snell, you have Brockton, you have Middleton open for threes. And they they were shooting the three last uh, game. On the other side, if Rogier uh, 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 goes under the screen, you know, uh, help at uh, ante 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 to combo, uh, then then you know Blackson has option to shoot the three himself. The other option is to give the ball to Yanis and Popo uh, at the high post or middle post, uh, and then he will operate from there. Um, and other option is to go through series of uh, handoffs with Brogdon and uh, Middleton at the right side, and then you wait the Celtics defense to collapse. So it, either you pass to G, to Yanis, or either you find the open man. And um, that kind of play, you know, that kind of play, and that one to two offense, uh, or uh, four out one one in uh, offense for them was the only uh, five that 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 worked in those two games for the for the Bucks. And they abandoned that in the game two. I don't know why, I don't care, I'm just saying, okay? Now, uh, let us discuss uh, points of turnovers in the two games. Boston, 48, Milwaukee, 28. So, points of turnovers against the Celtics, plus 20. The second chance points in two games. Boston, 48, Milwaukee, 13. The second chance points, uh, plus 29, uh, you know, the Celtics. The best scoring in two games, Boston 68, Milwaukee 48. So practically the, the bench plus 20, uh, Boston. The Bucks shoot it 55.7%. Yanis and Middleton combined 55 points out of 23 of 31 shooting. And the Celtics defeated them 120, 106. And they took uh, the two all series lead. Uh, now, Danny, what do you say about the information? Points of turnovers plus 20. Second chance points plus 29. Plus, and then scoring plus 20. All, almost in every parameter except fast break point, the Celtics are there. And points in the paint. That's Points in the paint and fast break points, the only uh, parameters that backs are bad in those two games. Again, you know, points in the paint, we all know that that was something they were going to have the edge in because they got onto the Kumpo. You know, that's really it. You know, onto the Kumpo is, uh, you know, the tallest guy on, uh, on the court in this situation. You know, he's got. The LeBron treatment in his in his back pocket. That's one thing. You know, me and my father were saying yesterday. You know, if we couldn't get uh, you know that guy to be basically given a regular player treatment here in Boston, he's getting a LeBron type treatment out there out here. Imagine in Milwaukee, what we're gonna be seeing technically from the officiating when it comes to this kid. You know, and this kid is only just starting his career. 
So I'm not surprised points in the paint, and that's just because of him in this situation more than anybody else. Oh, uh, the fast break points, that's something that really, to me, that's just an effort situation. Yeah. You know, the fact that we've got less turnovers, and yet they still have the more, you know, fast break points means that it's them, you know, out, out hustling us up and down the courts off the misses, literally. Mm -hmm. That's really it. That's all, you know, all it comes down to in this situation. You know, mm -hmm. so that's, a, you know, a problem. And Brad Stevens has got to tell the guys that, that, you know, going to, you got to roll with it in Boston. Going to Milwaukee, you cannot afford to have that happen in this situation because that could end up burning you. You know, you know that team is not gonna is not gonna take things lightly, knowing that they're down 2-0 and that they know you lose one of those games to us in in your own court. It could end up, you know, spelling the end for you when you come back to Boston for Game Five. But the other, you know, things like you said, the turnovers. Uh, you got to give Terry Rozier a ton of credit. You know, we could all, you know, kind of say Terry Rozier, you know, is the backup, and he may not ha may not have been, you know, expected to be the, um, you know, the second backup. Some, you know, kind of view that he was really expected to be like the third. Uh, others kind of say, you know, that Marcus Smart was probably going to be the second. You know, but yeah, he, he even in the, in his role, you know, he's Kyrie Irving from what we've been re we've heard. Kyrie Irving has been, like, talking to him, kind of, like, trying to give him yeah. some, uh, you know, guidance throughout this entire advice. process. Exactly. You know, advice. And Kyrie um, was here for him not to have a single turnover in the first two okay. games of the playoffs here. In 77 minutes. Exactly. And, you know, that is an impressive, you know, feat. Look at some of these other point guards you have out here in, this, in these playoffs right now. You know, you got big name quarter, you know, should I say uh, big name uh, point guards like Rajon Rondo, you know, playing in these playoffs. You know, you got uh, like, you, uh, you got so many others. Who else can we say that about, Igor? That's a starting, you know, point guard and doesn't have, you know, a, a single turnover. There ain't no uh -huh. other point guard I, that I can probably think of that is anywhere near having zero turnovers through two games. You know, so Terry Rozier right now is starting to make an argument that maybe he is the one you might want to keep over Marcus Smart in this Absolutely. situation, Absolutely. you know, and that he is going to be worth whatever money that you know Danny Ainge yeah. decides to pay him, or whatever money he might basically be wanting to say, "I want to get paid for yeah. me." You know, I I think I think uh, when you mentioned that, I wanted to say that you mentioned that uh, he's playing himself into. Five years, 75 millions, in my view, if he continues with a good, good play uh, in the playoffs, right? Yeah, because again, you know, you Kyrie Irving to come back. Again, you're looking at a starting lineup of Irving Hayward, Tatum Brown, and, and Hufford. That's what Danny Ainge has envisioned. Next yeah. for next year, as of right now, you currently have Taylor Zia and Marcus Morris. You know, with, uh, you know, from what I understand, you got like the Daniel Tice, uh, Mr. Daniel Tice. Still, be under, still be under, you know, contract. So you got at least three other guys with you right now that you can say are sure players for next team, next year's team. You know, you still yeah. need, you know, two other guys that can go. But you can say right now with what we're seeing, you will have confidence in Terry Rozier running that second unit. Or yeah. if anything was to happen, running the first unit with Horford, Hayward, Tatum, and yeah. Brown, if anything was to happen to Kyrie Irving, let's just say, oh. in this case. You know, so, so Terry Rozier is making a, a big-time statement through these first two games. You know, it's uh, unfortunate that uh, it's coming at a major expense for Bledsoe. You know, you look at all yeah. the embarrassing stuff being put online for him as of last night. You know, in this case, yeah. you know, him being a pretty sore, you know, a uh, sore loser after last night's game with his yeah. comments that he said Let's, to the media. Do, do you want, when you finish to play that, uh, the audio that we have, it's uh, excellent stuff. Yeah. Yeah, well, we can go to that, you know, but uh, 
but it's a, a pretty impressive overall that we have that the turnovers have awesome. been a, have been a, a major um, decision maker in this series thus far, and I think pretty much it's gonna it's gonna be like that the rest of the way. The team that can minimize the turnovers the most is going to be the one that walks away with the wins in each and every one of these games. And thus wow. far, you can say te- technically the point guard battle, Igor, has been the major difference maker when it comes to that. Because Bledsoe has caused a lot of turnovers for his team through the first two games. And Terry Rozier, as we said, hasn't made a turnover in any game whatsoever. And because of it, yeah. he is winning the, ter- the, you know, the battle of the two point guards because not only is he basically not turning it over, but when it comes to the points, he's basically scoring, you know, I think tw- over 20 points per game right now, and Betso isn't really putting up much whatsoever. I don't think he scored a single point in game one, and I think he scored only about 11 points in, in game two here, you know, which is why everybody's saying, right now, Terry Rozier is schooling you in, this, in these first two games. You're going to have to do something if you're bet so in, or in these next two games if you really want your team to have a chance to come back. If you don't do anything, that Milwaukee coach is going to have to consider making a change to that starting lineup to try and get somebody to try and stop Terry Rozier if they want a chance of competing with us. But they have Brogdon that is uh, still not uh, fit 100% and he cannot start sadly, so... I think that they, they, they must uh, go with Eric, with uh, Eric Bledsoe because uh, they 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 signed uh, another point guard. What is his name? I I I, I forgot, but uh, he's not at the level of uh, Bledsoe and uh, Brown. You know? um, anyway, uh, let us hear if you can uh, that audio then we will continue. Terry Rozier has gotten off to a, a strong start to the series. No turnovers in 78 minutes. How personally do you take that matchup? Who? Terry Rozier. I don't even know who that is. So while the Celtics managed to tackle on 120 points in game two, there's plenty Ooh. of shots fired in the gym where we're sitting right now, but there's also shots fired in the oh, locker wow. room. Wow. The Milwaukee okay. Bucks locker room. Eric Bledsoe had an interesting take on what Terry Rozier has been doing lately. Uh, someone pointed to him that <laughs> he hasn't committed a turnover in games one and two. And when he was That's... asked about what, does he feel guilty for uh, you know allowing Terry Rozier to play so well, he said, who's who's Terry Rozier? I don't, I don't know who the F that is. That's such a Rondo thing to say. So I, I gotta it? tell you. Is uh, Eric a little too too salty, guys? A little too salty so about the way Terry Rozier is playing? So many flavors in salty. I gotta tell you, if he doesn't know who Terry Rozier is, it makes a lot of sense then. <laughs> the last two games make a lot of sense because Rozier just he's, he's, absolutely had his way. You can't you find him on the see? court. He's not, he's not guarding him. I don't even know how Bledsoe found his way back to the gym for game two after what Rozier did to him in game one on that step back I was three. going to he say. Had, he had Bledsoe walking out of the gym I would have benched play. him because, you know what, Bledsoe gave up on that play, too. Well, it wasn't it wasn't, well, it wasn't his fault. He was, he was halfway down 93 on his way to New Hampshire <laughs> by the time Rozier took the shot. Well, no, I mean, no, no. No, no, you know what that was? That was the old school, you know, you playing one-on-one, talking smack all game, and you're just looking at him like, you're not going to make that shot. I, I dare you to take that shot. Yeah. And Rozier took him on his offer and, and sunk it right in his face. I love Terry That's what Rozier. I, I, I love what I've seen from him. This season, last season, but he's getting a little cocky too. Here That's what of, I like the most about him. I well, like the my guy, this kind of thing. Yeah, like, he, it's not a cocky he, level yet. Just confident. That's I don't what. Know. That's What's what he, he wanted from a point guard. Rondo used to say the same stuff, and well, everyone Rondo loved won a him for that. Rondo championship in his second year. What, what, what's okay? What's Terry well, Rondo done? also had a little bit of better of a supporting cast, and Terry's taking on much more of a load than Rondo took scoring wise. And I, I gotta say, I'm impressed by the kid. I like his. I'm attitude. impressed too. I'm not. I'm not picking on him. I'm just making he's, an observation. He's dominating. Jimmy. He's dominating a veteran in this league, uh, in two games. Right. And he's I'm doing what he that. needs to do. I mean, here's a guy who's played in the shadow of Isaiah Thomas, and he played in the shadow of Kyrie Irving. As he should. He's Continu- only a three-year player. Absolutely. Jimmy. But he's continuing to do his thing, learning from both those guys. Probably now he's applying probably what he's learned and what he's brought 
you know, what he, what he already knew about himself. Right. Now we're starting to see that on the big stage because he has that bigger role. Well, we also have to remember that this guy has a humongous chip on his shoulder because you guys remember what happened the night he was drafted. Was anyone cheering about Terry Rozier? I was, was anyone saying through Terry the Rozier? <laughs> I was going, flipping Who's through Terry Rozier? the program. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, exactly. he's always had that chip on his shoulder since he came out of Louisville. So this is doesn't surprise me at all. And he can he can dance he's around and do the rah rah moments. I love it. I think it's it's a level of confidence and it's a it's I wouldn't call him cocky. I just I just think he's just showing everyone what he's made of. I think there's definitely a line. There's definitely a line between you know cockiness and confidence, and I, I I don't think he's crossed that. I think that he needs to show confidence because there's a lot of guys following in his footsteps, and I think in the NBA you, you know sometimes you really only go as far as your point guard takes you, and you need him to. to I'm not be picking on Terry. I mean, no, I, definitely I, not. I'm not. I I'm honestly I love everything he does. I love watching him play basketball. He's certainly got a s- s- terrific career ahead of him. Just made an observation. That's all. But Bledsoe should. Yeah, but I think Bledsoe just looks kind of foolish. He looks right. like an idiot. Well, just Bledsoe, when you thought he, he looks like Rondo. Look Rondo. It's such a Rondo he move. Just, why do you have to bring up Rondo? He just demonstrated <laughs> how he doesn't get enough. How Terry no, Rozier doesn't did, get enough did. respect. That's pretty much what he did. <laughs> demonstrated how he doesn't get much respect, and exactly it's going to be interesting to see Terry? what happens. No, the team. Uh, Bledsoe. Yeah, yeah, what Bledsoe said obviously shows how They're Terry Rozier doesn't get enough What kind of respect do they want at this point? Come on, you don't know who he is. Come on, come on, Bledsoe. You better. Yeah, you got to show it. We'll see who gets the best of of his back and forth. Well, I'm sure Terry Rozier will be asked about it. We'll see who gets the last laugh in game three Terry will be Milwaukee. really funny about it, too. Yeah, I, I wish he said it before we, we you know, he took, <laughs> to the, took it to the podium because it would have been a nice question to ask him. But we'll see who gets the last laugh in game three in Milwaukee between Terry Rozier and Eric Bledsoe as the plot thickens in this best of seven series. The Celtics mm-hmm. up Ooh-hoo. two games to zero against the Milwaukee Bucks, and that's going to do it for us for this segment of CLNS Media, The Garden Report. We are back up in the audio. Uh, we finished with uh, this Eric Bledsoe nonsense. Uh, one information before we continue to talk about the games, Danny. Uh, the NBA uh, has re- resigned it, the double technical fouls Boston's Terry Rogier and Milwaukee Stone Maker picked up Tuesday night. So, league, league looks at everything determined the back and forth between Rogier Maker didn't rise to the technical foul level. So this kind of, um, uh, this kind of uh, 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 idi- idi- idiotic, you know, um, uh, 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 this kind of idiotic fouls are totally unnecessary, you know? And I really hope that uh, officials, officials will not, um, you know, um, eject somebody like uh, who said Marcus Morris because the last night uh, Stevens put him out when he tossed somebody and he was at the verge of getting technical so I think it was uh, the great uh, you 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 know uh, uh, it was a great reaction from the students anyway uh, let us uh, recap the games and talk about the heroes uh, and those are Terry Rogier and uh, uh, Brown, so they they deserve our attention at this podcast, uh, Danny. Um, Boston starting uh, back for Terry Rogier and Brown combined to outscore the Milwaukee starting back Kurt, uh, Eric Bledsoe and uh, Tony Snell, ninety six to twenty five throughout the two games in the series. I will repeat: so, Terry Rogier and Jalen Brown. Outscored Eric Bledsoe and uh, Tony Snell, 96 and 25. And also, Terry Rozier played 78 minutes in the two games without committing turnover. That is incredible statistics. Um, and also, Rozier is uh, right now average uh, 23 points per game in the series. So, Jalen Brown led the Celtics 30 points, uh, career high. Uh, performance to defeat the Bucks 120-104 in the game two. Uh, if you get any reminding concerns about whether the Celtics can score in the postseason without Irving and Hayward and uh, Smart and uh, Tice, you can probably put those concerns to rest, at least against Milwaukee. 
Um, that's not to say the subjects won't go throughout everything laws. They will. Um, I'm not suggesting that the subjects are better without uh, Irving, Tabor, uh, uh, Smart, and um, Thais. They are not. But the subjects have Jalen Brown, Rozier, and Tatum, the three youngsters. On the night like that, the subject defeated uh, Bucks in the game to 120 at 104. And the young trio uh, was brilliant. Tatum uh, was a little shy. The subjects came out firing Brown's layup and buried a triple. All of his largest points came from massive one one handed dunk on the uh, Trent Tyler uh, Zeller. And Zeller acted wisely not to contest the dunk because he would have been killed otherwise. Uh, the Bucks kept pace behind Giannis and to come for first 10 points in the uh, first quarter, but down to 12 in the first and Brown's late three-pointer helped the Celtics take 33-23-22. lead after one. Plus 11. In game one, the Celtics struggled to maintain their advantage. In the second quarter, they lost the lead. The same proved to be true in the game two. After Boston pushed the lead uh, up to 13, the Bucks put together 13 all lead to, uh, you know, uh, tie the game 35 35 in the second quarter. Boston answered with 7 0 run and start by Terry Rozier, the leader. The third year guard uh, buried a three pointer, then forced a turnover and started a fast break finished uh, off by Aaron Baines that uh, put the Celtics back up five. With 30 seconds left in the uh, half, Rozier. Uh, Breakaway dunk stretched the lead to 60-51. Um, and uh, the Celtics pulled away um, in, in, in the third. Rozier, so 60-51 after two quarters. In the third, Rozier floater uh, gave the Celtics uh, uh, 11 points advantage and Brown second triple. Uh, and a three from the corner in front of uh, Milwaukee's bench. That gave the Celtics advantage 78-64. After forcing a turnover with three seconds remaining, Brad Stevens called timeout and set up a buzzer, beating pointer by Shane, Shane Larkin. Uh, so Brad was genius again. Uh, Larkin raced to the sidelines and celebrated with Yabu Sally. Uh, the Bucks closed the lead to 14 twice and they closed to 10, but the Celtics defense forced turnovers and bad shoots and Boston crossed to walk in the paint in the second half. Modro hooked um, and put the Celtics up 18, you know, uh, in the fourth. Milwaukee then uh, treated twice close to 10 uh, with Rea plus foul by Amazon. But Giannis missed a free throw. And the Celtics put the game away with few jumpers by step, step away by Mark Morris, three pointer by Terry Rozier. Brown led the Celtics with 30, Rozier 23, Mark Morris out of the bench 18. Anthony to come from middle from 55 combined points, but uh, 53 by um, Rozier and Brown. So that's practically uh, plus two only for the Bucks. Um, and uh, the bench out for plus 16 bucks, and the Celtics have 2 0 lead. And now the game number uh, three keeps off uh, 9 30 on ESPN in uh, Friday. Uh, Daniel, talk about Morris. Morris is a closer. Morris is energy guy. Morris is a fighter. Morris. Taunted the guys, I'm not only mentioning the performance, 18 points, uh, 3 of 6 uh, for 3, 6 of 11 shooting, 5, uh, 5 rebounds and 1 assist. But uh, uh, he also, uh, Danny showed the leadership, you know, uh, he taunted the box and, you know, he stared at Giannis after that uh, uh, dribble, step away, threes. And I like it. And that put, put, you know, a fuel and more, more 
that made the bugs more nervous. So those two step away trees in the past time were just beauty. And Morris, as we said in the season preview back in October, Morris is a star. What can we say about him? Morris yesterday was, you know, kind of like the, a version of a KG, if you think about it. You yeah. know, KG used to have that uh, that type of an attitude that would get the fans up off their seats, ch- you know, celebrating, chanting, because he was somebody that if there was anybody from another team trying to act like, you know, I own this this, you know, I mean, I own you fans, I own this Boston Celtics team, KG was going to basically put, put your, you know, your rear end on the floor, basically, and let you know, you know, you ain't messing with, with us in this case. And Morris was the one that did that last night, when it, and he did it to Middleton. You know, Middleton has, you know, kind of gotten this, you know, kind of an attitude over the first two games, and yesterday kind of seemed to get a little bit out of hand with him. You know, as he was not too thrilled, you know, I think him and Ante Decumpo have kind of gotten um, a little bit frustrated over the over the fact that the two of them are doing what they need to do, but the rest of the right. team isn't doing anything to help. You know, and that, uh-huh. that's understandable. Like I said, Ante Decumpo, however, and Middleton, I look at it completely, however, the way they look at the, those things, I look at them two separate ways. With Ante Decumpo, Ante Tecupo, his attitude, however, is the fact that, like I said earlier, he's looking for the LeBron James treatment. You know, every time he attacks the rim, he wants a foul call, he wants to get to the free throw line, and if he doesn't get the calls, he isn't happy. You know, that's one thing, however, that you look at LeBron James and you say, you know, that LeBron James... He's got, you know, LeBron James has a legitimate beef because LeBron yeah. James, he has, you know, uh, 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 you know, an argument because he does take a beating, regardless of the fact that we may not like him. LeBron James, how many times he attacks the rim and he does get whacked and no call is made. However, you look at Ante DeCoupe, what have we seen in these first two games? This kid literally. You cannot touch him without a foul call being made. Yet, yeah. we're seeing him, Igor, literally jumping. Look, look, he's looking like he's trying to be a, a man in a circus act, trying to, jump over, trying to jump over the heads of the Celtic players so that he can get rebounds. And yet, he basically doesn't want foul calls made against him for it. You know, it has become ridiculous the type of, you know, um, the, the, the way that the NBA has made these young players today, guys like him, guys like Anthony Davis, the young players that basically have not done anything thus far in their careers to really earn respect, other than that, other than that they score a lot of points because they're the main guys on their teams. That's really it. It's a shame that those guys have now gotten that type of mentality at such a young age. Because they're just going to end up like LeBron when they get older. Especially once they win a championship, forget it. They're going to be even more obnoxious than they are now in this case. But Middleton, in this situation, I feel with him, it's really that he was just upset because they were getting whooped, unlike Ante Tecupo. Ante Tecupo, his attitude was that he wasn't happy with the fact that he wasn't getting all the calls he wanted yesterday. You know... Every time he had the ball, he wanted something being called in his favor. Middleton, he just didn't like the fact that basically we were, you know, they were getting pumped and the team wasn't responding in this case. Yeah. You know, and so he tried to do something that he thought basically would get the team to be, you know, to, to get, you know, fired up and respond. And Morris responded in the exact same way that instead fired up the Celtics and the Celtic fans. So it had the opposite effect than what the what Middleton, you know, um, was hoping for. But Morris, you know, explained it. The two of them have gone a long way with each other. They come back, you know, I think from the college days, if I'm correct for what Morris said. So, you know, it's uh-huh. not a major thing between the two of them, you know. Yeah. But it's unfortunate. 
unfortunate that you know that you know Brad Stevens had to remove you know Morris in a situation like that because unfortunately we know how these officials are going to look at that. You know, you just mentioned uh, you know the yeah. news with with Fozier, you know, getting that that double technical rescinded. You know, yeah. look at the incident that occurred with him that caused him to get that technical. He's got a wide open three pointer. And, you know, I think it was Maker who got the other technical in that issue. And yes. Maker is on the bench, along with the rest of the Milwaukee bench. Several of the players get up, and Maker tries to go right up behind Rozier and tries to yell in Rozier's, you know, ear behind him so that Rozier can miss the three because of the fact that we were already up close to 20 points at that time. And what happens? Rozier makes the three, so the maker's, you know, actions didn't work, and Rozier turns around and yells back at him as he walks away. How, yeah. in the, how in the world can you justify giving Rozier a technical? Rozier wouldn't have responded to Maker if Maker had just kept his rear end on his seat and let the game continue to go, you know? So, you know, yesterday I got upset because Mike Gorman said they gave Rozier a technical. I thought they only gave it to Rozier and gave nothing to the Milwaukee bench. Luckily, yeah, yeah. you know, exactly. Luckily, they gave a double technical, which made it that it was no free throws awarded to either team. You know, so luckily the NBA themselves rescinded it. But come on, you got to make a decision there. You can't allow somebody from the bench to get up and start yelling at a player's ear when he's wide open for a three, all because of the fact that his teammates basically failed to play the proper defense and then go yes. giving the player of the, the player on the court a technical, all because he yells back at them, but yet he's walking away the opposite direction. I can understand if Rozier got right in the guy's face and went up to him while he's on the bench and tried to instigate something, but no, Rozier is walking away down the court to go back to playing defense, but yell something while, while doing it. Come on. That's just a cop-out trying to get Rozier to get a technical because we all know, just like in the regular season, the more technicals you get, the odds are that there's a chance you're going to get suspended. And that's what these officials are trying to aim for. Okay. Uh, let us now uh, talk about the Brown. Dylan Brown became the youngest Celtics to score 30 plus in the playoffs. Uh, so he uh, hitting five of twelve threes and uh, thirty points. Uh, so he uh, he the, the other is eight time NBA champion, fifty seven rookie of the year, Tom Kenson, uh that did that as a rookie thirty points. Uh, John Brown is the youngest Celtics in history, however. To do 30 plus points in the playoffs. Tom Kenson, 22 years. Uh, and Brown, 21. Perhaps the most impressive about last night, uh, 30 points and, uh, uh, only one point came from Peter Ottenham. Brown, Ziggs and, and Zach, uh, both handling better, spotted up beyond the arc, feeling extra, uh, motivated. Brown is second, second year from the University of California after emerged and is the third ranked recruit in the nation in 2015. Considered as a player with prototypical physical profile, a light elite scorer, but in consistent outside shooting when drafted, he progressed with a player to hit 39.5% from threes in the regular season and uh, he should be 34 in the previous season. He is 7 of 17, 41% of or threes this, this season. Uh, Brown ball handling improved dramatically. Uh, use of dribble drive uh, to the left, to the right side, and the finish. Impressive. While beyond this year and uh, possessing tremendous work ethic, Brown's progress will be tracked carefully. Uh, Tuesday's 30 points performance was the new player career record for him. We said everything that about uh, Brown, then, right? Something to add on the story? Again, Brown in this situation, you just said it. The impressive thing is that only one of those points came from the free throw line. That's the yep. most impressive thing of all. 
You know that the uh, really hasn't been that great a shooter prior to this, you know, to the playoffs. And yesterday, he just looked like he couldn't miss a shot. You know, mm-hmm. and most importantly, you see him attacking the rim when he's supposed to, taking the threes when he's supposed to, taking the jumpers when he's supposed to. This kid looks just say it looked like he was a seasoned veteran, you know. And the good thing, you know, to my father is that Jason Tatum and him, the way they are playing in these playoffs right now, again, it's only two games, but again, you make you you play like this right now, there is no excuse why you can't play like that once Kyrie Irving and Gordon Hayward come back next season. Knowing that those two will be the ones with the pressure on them because they are the superstars. It's kind of like how you can say, Igor, that we had Kirk, I should have said Garnett, and Ray Allen first came to Boston with Pierce as the leaders. You had Rajon Mondo and Kendrick Perkins that were there as the, as the fifth, fifth and fifth starters. Those two didn't have any pressure. It was the big three that had all the pressure to try and carry the team. Well, next year it's the same thing. Alfred, Hayward, and Irving will have the pressure as the stars, but then Brown and Tatum will, should, will not really have much whatsoever in terms of all the pressure. But these guys, because of that fact that they won't have much pressure, they either expect even bigger things from them next year after what we're seeing right now in these playoffs, seeing them play like this with all the pressure on their shoulders. Okay, uh, the other hero is Eddie Rozier. So Eric Bledsoe asked the reporter, who is Terry Rozier? So indeed, let's talk about Rozier. Who is Terry Rozier? Eric Bledsoe claims he doesn't know who Rozier is, but the Celtics guard is making sure the rest of the NBA does. So, uh, in game two, Rozier uh, had 23 points out, eight assists out for Bledsoe. So, uh, Bledsoe asked my reporter uh, about Rozier, who? And reporter said Terry Rozier. And that's why I don't know uh, who the fuck that is. Cre- clearly, Rozier is the guy who put up 23 and 8 on Bledsoe on uh, game 2. So Bledsoe undoubtedly knows uh, because Rozier is the same guy who got a critical jump shoot in the game 1, you know, and uh, practically uh, sent him to, 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 to ski. Uh, and uh, so some some, some took, uh, took this as uh, a shoot at a third year guard uh, because uh, Terry Rozier referred Black Bledsoe as Drew Bledsoe earlier in the series. Uh, while a fine NFL quarterback and uh, Drew Bledsoe is more definitely not the starting point for the Bucks. Uh, NBA is very, very tricky. Regardless, uh, Bledsoe opened up in the interview, and uh, by the way, Rozier has posted 46 points on uh, 47% in the two games, zero turnovers, and both of them and both of them won by the Celtics. So we might all want to get familiar who that guy is. Familiar was Rozier was drafted in 2015, the same year the Celtics traded uh, wanted to make a trade. Uh, to move up to trade for Justice Winslow. So that repercussions to fail, first you uh, uh, finished uh, the reportedly offer included first rounders, including uh, uh, Brooklyn Peak, uh, and uh, Rozier would not be up. And uh, in the long run, maybe it will be best than you said. Those Brooklyn Nets uh, fielded uh, Brown, Tatum, and Irving, and Rozier was taken as 16 feet. Rozier has taken Irving place in the starting final. So Brown uh, has been phenomenal, um, average 25 and 5, while Tatum pulled Julius Irving worthy move at the critical moment in one. So yes, the things worked well for the change. Speaking of Ames draft choices, the Rozier selection was highly criticized at the time. It was mocked uh, as Rozier, not the conventional wisdom, has ever really played a role in Ames' process. 
the Jalen Brown choice was almost criticized. During the period of Suffix rebuild following the having a half of his trade, Ainge drafted Kelly Olinik, Marcus Mark, Rogier, Brown Tate. He also filled out the bench with the players like Gershon, the dancing bear, Yakusemi, Nader, Ojale, Jabari Bird. There were also cho choices by James Young, RJ Hunter, and he skipped to draft Ante the Compo. So, Ainge's draft history is endlessly fascinating. Rozier didn't play, play, play much as a rookie. Spending the time in May, he left uh, Rozier uh, for players uh, uh, that, that were not traded the last two years. One never knew what would happen, but uh, thus far, he enjoyed the Rozier experience. He began to carve out as a role in the second year behind Thomas Bradley Smart. They, that would be all the brilliant performances, and Rozier shoot was inconsistent in the first two years. Uh, more rebounds and assists, making him something of an eagle. Rozier exploits gains of power following among Celtic Twitter, which is, uh, Celtic Twitter is called himself, but um, play, play went widely unnoticed and by larger basketball community. Rozier made massive in the third year a prominent role. His games were still erratic, but uh, tended to yield positive. Uh, in a Soviet tradition dating back to Tony uh, Allen's uh, Green Father days, Rozier was the better house conductor uh, of the highest order. He liked nothing better than flying for defensive defaults and uh, starting one man fast breaks. What's next? Who knows? Um, weird Celtic Twitter called him Tito and Scary Terry for the reason. A funny thing happened to Scary Terry Rozier after injuries, injuries took Irving and Smart. Uh, for all his high energy work, Rozier um, turns the ball rarely. He, his turnover ratio is comparable to Mike Conley's Memphis. And inconsistent as a finisher, Rozier outside shooting is dramatic. He posted average 15, 6, and 5 as a starter on the West Coast trip and helped the Celtics to have 4 and 0. Rozier has become a player at this league, which that would make uh, the things interesting this summer with the Smart and his free agency. So, who is Rozier? The Rogier is currently the player uh, who is busting the box and let's go. But hey, you all already knew that self-expense, right? And that was the story about our hero, Terry Rogier. Um, and also Danny, uh, Dylan Brown's success ruined Danny Ainge again. Because uh, back in 2016, he was selected number three, but uh, um, Everybody mocked that and, and extra Celtics fans whistled that choice. Yeah. Everybody mocked that top 10, Brown as a top 10 player. In the 2016, Brown was Angel's lottery ticket. And the Celtics fans wanted to trade for, uh, I forgot uh, that point guard, I think in Minnesota, uh, I, I will remember. And the Celtics fans, yeah, um, the, Celtics, the Celtics fans wanted to trade for, uh, 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 for Jimmy Butler. Okay, the Celtics fans wanted another player that was drafted by Bulls, I think, uh, 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 point guard that would help us to trade for Butler. But the second year swingman now uh, is tuning up and showing, you know, uh, potential. So, Brown uh, was uh, his second one right now, you know. He had solid career, back down tournaments, uh, made 21% of his shoots from the field in California, finished uh, the season with 43% uh, of the field, long range, and everything else. Brown is foundation uh, for the service.
And this year, because browser was ready, open and and also highly uh, deadly, that helped development of uh, Brown. But Ainge was playing with the house money after stealing number three pick from uh, Brooklyn Deal uh, for Pierce Garnett, Jason Ten. So um, he could afford to take the players with the highest ceilings, ceiling and number three. Knowing if Brown was bust, his team would be insulted. Midway, California star to develop slowly. Head coach Stevens not play him right away, um, not more than 24 minutes in the first 44 minutes. Brown was asked to focus on the defense and shooting other things. Three points, the first made, 26% at, at, at the first at the California, but the Celtics gave him the green light because he shot it 32% as a rookie. Um, or three. With Isaiah Thomas, Horford, Bradley sharing the load, Brown didn't play. But in 2017, the Celtics deal away Thomas, Bradley, Brown. And they received Irving and Marcus Morris in return. The team relied heavily on Brown as a start, as defender. And after Gordon's favor went down, Brown and Tatum, the third year guy, they became the starting uh, uh, Boston's back. Circumstances shortening Brown's leaning curve. Brown slotted into Boston's starting lineup, but was pressed into 40 minute action when Hart Hayward suffered injury. Sophomore season was journey of pick and volleys, and improvements were there 26 points against Denver, and then six. Uh, points the late game, but uh, somebody compared him to the Draymond Green. While he was uh, wasn't the most reliable player, uh, the talent was undeniable. He shooting for three around 39 percent. Now his defense is well known, his skills stabilized, and improvement in the you know um, all can. Those leaps in the year two, and the player performance is showing uh, that Brown has potential to be all star. Without Hayward and Irving, he is number one option right now. And he has 50 points in two games, and playing 72 minutes combined right now. The Boston Celtics needed the step up, you know, and that's exactly what Brown is giving them. So again, Brown, Rogier, and uh, 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 you know Jason Tatum are the Celtics' goal, and I hope that they will be a long time, at least two of them. Anyway, uh, we didn't mention one guy, Danny. Uh, I mean, we mentioned everything, but the Celtics answered Milwaukee's Giannis at five line after. Any observations on the paper, Giannis and five lineup. On Tuesday, Milwaukee went that lineup frequently, but the Celtics had multiple answers. First answer, four for the five worked nicely, all stars. Until the combo can't really deal with four for the post. And the Bucks can't send a double because a four for picks them apart with his passing. Number two, the Celtics even got Giannis into bed, bed switches at five. At one point, he um, wound up on Rozier to back out the play and then uh, watered his pass uh, into the open layer. Going big also did wonders. Monroe scored easy layups against the uh, small ball. Giannis had five layups. Uh, small ball box layup lineups. Monroe punished small ball with the layups. Aaron Baines did well staying in front of Giannis uh, and forcing him to work for his shoots. An underrated aspect of the Celtics run without two best players, just how they adjust the lineups. Um, and Alpha for excellence, I don't, you know, trust Barkley uh, on TAT that the Celtics need 20 and 10 from Al. In the game 10, 2, he had 16.5 and the Celtics won because 
he was class 14, and he guarded Giannis well. And the call for biggest contribution in the series guarding Giannis, pushing him when the box goes small. He doesn't need to go 30 every night or 24. The Celtics fans noticed and gave applause for the uh, Horford. Jason Tatum went off in the first 19 and 10, but the defense was solid. Uh, he shot 9 points, 2 of 9, uh, but the solid defense and helped us penetration, rebounding, rebounding especially, several rebounds, forcing turnovers. Tatum showing flashes on good anticipation in passing lanes, four steals. So, kudos to Tatum for the defense. 